Right, welcome back everybody. I thought I'd do something a bit different today. Now, I've done a few videos inside the tunnel, but I thought today we would have a full tour, good look around, good, bad, ugly, the things I've done right, the things I've done that were completely stupid. So, right, let's go and have a look around. Right, let's go inside. Well, first of all, I'm a bloke, so of course I haven't quite finished it. <laughs> Still some work to do on the outside, more drop pins to put in, put in, but I'll get round to it, I'll get round to it, it's all right. Right, let's go in and have a look around. First of all, in this corner, we have the potting bench. I luckily picked this up on um, Marketplace, and it's absolutely brilliant got the big tray inside that you can take out and uh yeah little thing on top for all me bits and pieces labels and various squishers and pusher downers and me diary i wouldn't be without that because i i've got the memory of a goldfish i really have uh right the greenhouse comes equipped <laughs> with a roll up side ventilation system. So as it is now, it's rolled up with the wind netting outside. So we get plenty of good cross pollination. Lovely. Underneath, all the things I use, don't use a great deal to be honest. I love me Vitax, a Q4 fertilizer. Um, Bags underneath, they're all vermiculite, because I do love me vermiculite. Fantastic stuff. Right, here we got, first off, some runner beans. Probably shouldn't have grown them in here. Probably too hot. A lot of it hasn't set. But we got some, and it's quite good fun. Rolling along the top, going everywhere. So that's the runner beans. How the hell am I going to do this? Let's go around the table. Well, let's just do the table. Um, you know I love my fold-up table. Use it for all sorts. And underneath is uh, all the watering cans. And what I tend to do is, in this corner, I got a big 225-litre tank, which I fill up using a submersible pump. So the water in here is the right temperature for the tunnel so i think that's good little brush there for sweeping up and huh, you'll love this we can i do this with one hand of course i can what i've got here of course is a fishing net because everybody needs a fishing net in the poly tunnel because because we got a wood chip over a lot of it when i'm watering the wood chip sticks to the bottom of the watering cans and I can just scoop the wood chip out. Thought you'd like that one. Right, let's go on and have a look around. Now, <laughs> in the end of the middle bed we just got random flowers that I grew, put out here, there and everywhere. Odds and sods I had left over, I just chucked them in the end of the bed just because, well why not, why not? Uh, here we got a couple of cucumber plant going right up over. I've already had 30 cucumbers off these plants. And this one here, still producing pretty good. Cucumbers going right up through. And I've trained them now up over and they're going across the crossbar. But this one here, I walk around, he's starting to get really, is that mildew? Is that powdery mildew? I don't know. I'm putting it down to condensation dripping on top of it. But uh, I've cut off as many leaves as I dare. So I don't know. Can I treat that? I have no idea. Moving along, we've got the tomatoes here that are alicante 
they're coming on pretty good deep watering tubes I use and all these I've had is the deep watering and regular feeding it's tomorite that I use um, mix it up in a large watering can and I use a little liter watering can and I give them half a liter each plant every three or four days and they're yeah you know, they've set pretty good trusses have set about eight um obviously the map oh, there again what what is going on here we got nice size marigold nice size marigold what the hell is this thing it's just gone bonkers it's just a giant marigold um <laughs> Now, this probably wasn't my best idea. I put some sunflowers in the polytunnel and stupidly, <laughs> they, they've grown, I mean, this tunnel's eight foot tall. They've grown up and I've, I've literally, if you can see that, I've had to tie them with string to bend them over, but they look cool, don't they? I love it bit of sunshine when you open the door so that's them in the middle and underneath both the sunflowers and the sweet corn I've planted French climbing beans and up the middle there is a squash and it's called the three sisters technique and uh, so far all seems to be working pretty good. Squash is growing, beans are growing, everything's happy. Well, that's one thing I wanted to ask. On my sunflower, we've got the one at the top, but I've also got this, which looks like it's going to be another flower. Do they flower out the side? I don't know. If somebody could let me know, that'd be really good. There's not enough room in this bloody place, is there? Now, these are my bonkers tomatoes probably down to my bad pruning but they're, they're, they're just crazy I, I just don't know what's going on with them this lot is even worse i mean look at the flowers if that all makes fruit they're going to be amazing but they haven't really produced very well and they're all quite tiny and they're tending to split. So, yeah, that's not so good. Now, this is my number two mistake. These tomatoes down here should have been in hanging baskets, and I stupidly just planted them in the ground. But they've been producing, they've been having tomatoes. Most of them I just pick as I'm in here messing about. Now, these are my other ones. These ones here, these are the Akron F1s. They're all trussing up really nice. We've had a few already. We've had a few already. Especially these ones at the end. Yeah, they're looking really nice. And I've done nothing special. Just deep watered them and fed them. I've now took the the tops off because they've got six trusses on them all right so that's them we fell over now we've got the sweet corn at the end i've done a full video series on these in the playlist they're looking amazing i'm really pleased with them and over in this corner we've got my shade netted area where I try to bring on the seeds and the young plants. And over here, we've got probably way too much parsley. Um, we've got some cabbages and broccoli waiting to be put out as and when room appears in the onion, in the onion bed outside. And here we've got some dwarf French beans. I put them in, Glen. Veggie patch ideas, they're looking good, and they're sat in my self watering system with a bit of guttering behind. And it was 
be quite odd. The purple beans came up fine. I put in some yellow ones. None of they came up. And this is the second sowing. It's just starting to come up. Just starting to come up. Uh, all right, what have we got? Go. Oh, we've got, got some underneath. Underneath there again, you've got some cabbages and broccoli and some little gem lettuces just waiting to uh, go out as room appears. Got some little gem there just coming on, successional growing. Check me out with all my gardening knowledge. Uh, here is the tomato watering station or tomato feeding station. I just got a watering can here that I fill with me tomorite, make it up. And then with this one, like I say, half a liter each plant every three days. Um, we've got some strawberry plant here that are finished. And what I've done is, i move them out of the way. I've taken one runner off each plant and put it into a nine centimeter plant pot so that we can uh, grow some more plant. So that's what's going on there. Uh, moving along, like everybody else in the country, I think. <laughs> got onions drying, got the, the red barons here, and a few of the giant ones. Well, they're not so giant, but uh, they're drying away. That's them there. And then following on, we've got some random dwarf climbing beans, French climbing beans. Everybody's got to have a chair. So we've got the chair. Got a few watermelon growing there. Moving on down. This is my sieving bucket. So when I sieve my compost, I tend to put the lumps into this bucket then chuck it on a, a bit of ground outside that I'm trying to improve the, improve the soil with. So any organic matter, bits and pieces, pots I empty, all gets chucked on there. Uh, this is the staging. Um, down here I just keep all the pots I use most regularly. And of course some plain flour and yeast <laughs> that I, I make up me slug traps with. Uh, I feel like I'm a real gardener now. Look, I've got a, a seed, um, a seed, what do you call this thing here? <laughs> Sometimes I worry about myself. Anyway, they're in there. Seed box. And in this far corner, just some random, I mean really random, corn flour that just never got potted out. They just sit there being flowers, looking lovely. So, there we go, a bag of lime there that I put around try and keep the slugs away. We just view back out. That's the overall polytunnel. This one's 14 foot by 30. I've had it well, just over five months now, and I couldn't be more pleased with it. First tunnels, poly tunnel. So let's zoom out. And that's it. That's the full poly tunnel look around. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll be interested to look back on it in years to come, see how I've got on what I've learned I know one thing don't put things that can potentially grow really tall in your polytunnel well there we go that's it hope you've enjoyed it thanks for watching cheers and gone